as, you know, as I think about my successes, a lot of the reason for my success has been my both interest and willingness, but my ability to get people who are mentors to me. And you know, mentors are, in the end, people who are willing to um, give you their time, give you their expertise, but most importantly, not be yes people. You know, a mentor is somebody who has been an accomplished individual who is going to help you on your journey. And as an entrepreneur, it's a journey. You know, it's, you know, it's constantly building your cocoon, your knowledge. And you have to build that through interactions with people and be able to continue to put knowledge into your head. And the mentors are the people who are going to help you figure out what you should be reading. The mentors are the ones who are going to ask you those really zinger questions. You know, they're going to challenge you to become better, but they're also going to challenge your assumptions. Because too often, people are around you telling you how great you are. The mentor is the person who's willing to tell you the things that you're not so great at. But then be there to help build the areas that you're not great at so that you can become great at. Um, mentors. What you need to do, when I started, um, when I started my software company back in 1989, I was young. I was 23 and a half years old. And, you know, I didn't know a lot. And so what I did was I went out and looked up, uh, I wanted to start a software company that was going to work for large corporations. So I was able to get a magazine called CIO Magazine that listed the top 100 chief information officers in the United States. And I just started to call and write to these people and also write to a bunch of CEOs. And uh, the old movie, Wall Street, uh, was, was my mantra. You just keep calling and calling and calling until they're willing to see you. And that's what I did. And I ended up meeting with 35 of them. And I interviewed them, asked them what was wrong, because I wanted to find a need and fill it. But what I also asked, the ones that I, that I respected during that first meeting, I would say to them, would you be my mentor? And a lot of them would say, what, what do you want? You know, what is it that you're looking for? And I said, I just want your time every six, eight, 12 weeks. I just want to come see you. I don't want a lot of your time. I want to tell you what I'm doing, and I want you to, to challenge me. I want you to help me become better. And that's all I want. And Almost every one of them would say yes. It's hard for people when they see a young person, especially who's trying to build something, it's hard for them to say no. The problem, though, is the, the scariest word in the English dictionary has only two letters, N-O. And because people are so petrified of getting that answer, they don't ever ask. And so for me, I just asked, and I was able to get in the end, a whole bunch of people who really helped me build my business. Um, you know, having a personal life and being an entrepreneur uh, sometimes is an oxymoron. Um, you know, for me, uh, I've always told, especially young people, uh, that if, if you have an aspiration to be an entrepreneur, start immediately, now. You know, if you're in college, you're graduating, there's no better time. Because when you're in college, you, you understand how to live on macaroni and cheese for a long period of time. If you go out and start working for somebody and you start growing within an organization, start making a lot more money, you're much more likely to have cars, buy a house, have a family. And so now your fixed expenses start growing. So now the risk of trying to become an entrepreneur exponentially grows as your income grows. And so unless you're lucky enough to get fired with a big severance, or you have an inheritance or something else, unfortunately I run into too many people in life who tell me, oh, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I couldn't end up doing it. So getting started early is very, very important. You know, starting early is, is great because oftentimes you might not have a family. If you do have a family, though, um, you know, my, my perspective is you just have to make time. Um, it's so easy to have an excuse and say, I'm busy. I've got too much to do. 
And what I've become very good at is multitasking. And also, something somebody said to me a long time ago is that everybody who's going to walk into your room has a goal. And their goal is to take the monkey that's on their back and throw it onto your back. And I've found that the most successful entrepreneurs I know, the ones that do have balance, have become incredible. At the moment the monkey comes towards them, they either grab it in, in the air and throw it back, or the moment it lands on them, they grab it and throw it back. And so you need to make sure that you empower people to do their job, because that takes less time for you, which ultimately enables you to think bigger, be able to steer the, the, the ship, but also spend time. I mean, I have missed virtually no uh, school functions or sports functions with my kids. Now, sometimes it means I need to take red eyes and, you know, really get crazy on that. But I make that a priority. And if you prioritize it, you'll be there. Um, the higher education system in colleges, in particular, um, unfortunately have not been structured to succeed, in my opinion, from an entrepreneurial degree perspective. You know, ultimately, what's the goal? The goal is to help a student, if, if their objective is to become an entrepreneur, the institution's objective should be to do everything to prepare that person to graduate as an entrepreneur. If, if you're going to school for you know, music, or you're going to school for digital arts, or you're going to school for architecture, the programs have as a goal to prepare you so that you can build a building that's not going to fall down. Why wouldn't it be the same thing for entrepreneurship? And so I think that what's critical uh, with the entrepreneurship programs is that they pull together a very, very uh, strong academic, the, the theory, you know, basically taking apart an entrepreneur's life and an entrepreneur's business and ensuring that all the elements that go into making a company successful, that somebody has learned the best practices, has learned the theory of what works well, has learned the options of how to build sales organizations or the finance, et cetera. They need the basic principles, but what has really been lacking in most institutions is the practicum. And so the practicum, unless you've been able to practice it, unless you've been able to go out and see what a company looks like, what kind of furniture do they have, what kind of open or closed environment, what's the cultures, how did they start and build something to where it is today? Unless you have that, it's just theory. How are you going to build? So everything you're doing from scratch, really. And so the practicum is critical, but it's also this whole kind of two very, very important things that I think an institution could instill. One is the love of learning. So you want to make it so that these people understand that learning is not just when they graduate, it's lifetime. And secondly, the importance of peers and the importance of people around them. So if they've developed a network, if they understand how to build that network over time, combined with the theory, combined with the practice, you really can graduate as an entrepreneur. Cogswell is, is at the dawn of what I hope becomes the preeminent entrepreneurship program in the world, um, a program that everyone's going to try to emulate. Um, Cogswell is in a position uh, really of, of envy, I think, from most other institutions' eyes, because you know, Cogswell has a very, very strong uh, digital arts and media and programs around that uh, technology world. And they've got a culture, and they're sitting in the entrepreneurial capital of the world in Silicon Valley. And so you've got programs that are naturally uh, entrepreneurial. Many of these, of these students that are here and many of the graduates either in, aspire to or already starting companies. But they're starting them without the, the, the tools that we can provide from an entrepreneurial perspective. So what, what I'm hoping, if I look at this three years, five years from now, and we look back, 
I think what the team here is going to do is to build a institution that has both the vertical focus areas around, you know, whether it's gaming or any of these other technology arenas and the, and the digital media arenas, along with all the horizontal skills that are necessary for an entrepreneur to start up and ultimately become a gazelle, a fast growth creator of jobs, creator of wealth. The goal that has to be a stated goal of this institution is that we graduate entrepreneurs. Now, not everyone is going to graduate as an entrepreneur and not everyone is going to succeed as an entrepreneur. But the goal has to be to graduate them and prepare them to become gazelles. This country needs it, this world needs it, and they individually both desire it and we owe it to them to give it to them. And so what does that mean? We need to make sure that we provide the best academic environment. We need to make sure we provide the best experiences. We need to make sure that we pull together the world's best entrepreneurs who will be here as mentors, who will be here as, as um, adjunct professors, who will come on campus and lecture, who will provide their knowledge and experiences. And then we need to make sure that we create the interfaces between the students so that we can build those peer groups, those forums, so that they not only learn together while they're here, but they become their forum for life. You know, when, when you're young, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you need to go out and get experience. Um, and, you know, I, I totally disagree because I find that the most important thing when you're talking with somebody is they want to trust you. And you need to be pure. And I've had many people that I've mentored over time, and one of the things I've told them over and over again is, don't try to be something else. Be you. You've got to believe in yourself. You know, one thing I've, I've oftentimes said to people is, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And so it's that self-confidence. And if, if you've got that story, if you've got that vision, if you're that Pied Piper, people will follow you. And so it's critical to build what it is you're trying to accomplish. What is your vision? Where are you going? Why are you doing this? And I guarantee not only will people follow you and those customers you know, will see and will give you that chance, much more likely if you're young because they see that they want to give you that, that, that first shot in life. I mean, it's actually almost crazy to think how any company was ever started. You know, when you're a startup, how did Microsoft convince IBM they didn't even have a product? Yet look where they are today. And if you, if you take almost any company, you go back to the very beginning, somebody took a leap of faith in that person. And that's really what it's all about. Now, it's easy to go then hire the expertise in sales and marketing and finance and all those. Those are fungible assets. But the leadership, the dream, the vision, the Pied Piper, that's what we're going to be preparing for at Poundswell.